So if you're anything like me, pond and bank fishing is your jam. It's just what we do. So please do me a favor, hit that like and that subscribe button. Also, if you're new, comment below and say hi. I'd like to say hi back and welcome you to the team. But here we go, into the video. So the baits I'm gonna tell you about aren't really designed to be fished in all water columns, but they can if you do it correctly. So these three baits are baits that I take a majority of the time. One, because I don't want to take, first, I don't want to take a ton of tackle with me. I don't want to have a tackle bag where I have to carry and drag it around. I want a pair of pliers, I want a couple few rods, and I want to be able to get out there and fish. I want to fish. I don't want to be changing tackle for hours. So, what you're going to see is th these three baits are designed to fish all water columns. Our first bait we're going to start off by talking about is a worm. Now, in this case, I'm using a speed worm, and here's why. I want to be able to, to cover different water columns. In this case, I want to be able to cast and get it through the crap, through the lily pads, through the grass. A speed worm will do that. And if I want to get it to the lower water column or the middle water column, I can just put a weight here and fish it that way. It'll make it cast longer, but also it'll make it sink downward. This isn't, this is a floating speed worm. There's a lot out there. There's a lot of great worms out there. This is one of the worms that is, it has that Elaztec or the soft tuck. And to be honest, this is a worm that you probably, well, it might never come to retail sales. It's a prototype of a lure that has a little rattle there which helps so every time the tail wiggles it rattles but in this case this is one of those softer baits i think having a speed worm on is important because again you can fish different water columns but this one is is super soft the super soft ones make them more top waterish. those elastic and stuff the softer baits are going to be in that top water column so putting a weight on them will allow them to sink downward. One of the things that I, I look for in a speed worm is that if I do put a weight on it, I want it to float, the tail to float up. So if there's any current or anything in the water, breeze, anything, well not breeze, but any water movement, the tail will continuously move. That's very important <clears throat> when you're bank fishing because this bait will allow me to go through all that crap and if I put a weight on it, it'll let me get to the bottom too. So there's my first one, a speed worm. So the second bait I wanna talk about is a bait that I can use to imitate a forage fish. And in that case, I'm bringing a fluke with me. A fluke can be fished on the top. If you slow it down, it'll sink nose down, or if you're using the flush from Sixth Sense, it'll sink horizontally. But this bait can go through it all. It'll catch fish year around, and it does one thing that no other baits does not only well first it imitates the forage fish but it walks the dog so you can get this bait out there when rigged properly you can get it out there and walk it just make it walk back and forth and then pause it and when it pauses it'll nose down and get into that grass this is a fantastic bait year round and really an underutilized bait out there so that's number two and last but not least, the third bait I'm bringing out every time I go pond bank fishing is a chatterbait. Now this is a new chatterbait from Z-Man. This is a smaller one. I generally use the jackhammer, but in this case, it's on my bait caster because I am gonna do another video for a closer look on this one. But a chatterbait does a couple things really well. First off, it can be fished in all the water columns, upper, upper middle, and lower by the speed of your cadence of your, of your reeling it in. Next, it creates a great vibration in the water that attract fish. Third, it looks like a bluegill. And quite honestly, that bait is just unbelievable. So a chatterbait really allows you to fish all the water columns just like those other baits and is great for pond bank fishing. I don't want something that's gonna go super deep. I want something that's gonna stay on the top of the water or in that middle water column because as the bait, as the lure comes towards you, the water level is getting shallower. I can't use a deep diving crankbait here. Not to mention, 
in these cases, most of these stuff I try to use, I try to make them as weedless as possible. Grass is in this lake and in most ponds all around. Finding the grass is essential for that worm or that fluke because if you find the grass, you can pause it in, that, in there and bass will ambush that bait. So there you have it, three baits I think you should be using when you go pond bank fishing. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Also comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on, damn these gnats. We'll see y'all soon, cheers. Hit like and subscribe, take your own kids fishing.